My um, presentation is about a case study on esophagitis desiccans superficialis, or EDS. Um, this is was first reported in 1892 and is a rare condition with only about 200 cases being uh, reported every year. It's sometimes referred to as sloughing esophagus, if you see it in the literature um, referred to as that. Um, it's characterized by desquamation of the superficial mucosa with normal esophageal mucosa underneath. Um, it can develop idiopathically, but it's also been associated with um, certain medications that may injure the esophagus, including bisphosphonates, NSAID, bisphosphonates, NSAIDs and antidepressants, um, chemical and physical injuries, and with the use, um, and actually also certain autoimmune bullous diseases. Um, it can be asymptomatic and just found on um, endoscopy incidentally, but if a patient is symptomatic, the most common symptom is dysphagia, like our patient here. Uh, the second most common is expectoration or vomiting up of these white casts that you see in the picture. Um, and the third most common symptom is abdominal pain. Pathology most commonly shows perikeratosis and intraepithelial splitting, but that's not um, specific for EDS. There's actually no current uh, definitive criteria for diagnosing EDS because it is such a rare condition, but a review article um, by Hart et al. Um, in the literature suggested three endoscopic criteria for diagnosing EDS, which our patient met all three. And those were um, strips of sloughed esophageal mucosa greater than two centimeters in length, normal underlying esophageal mucosa, and number thir three, lack of ulcerations or friability of immediately adjacent esophageal mucosa. A differential diagnosis when you find these white plaques in the esophagus include um, candida of the esophagus, which a uh, nurse in our case, when um, we were in the room doing this endoscopy, she thought that that's what it was. Um, Another differential diagnosis includes is cynophilic esophagitis and also bullous skin disease. These can be ruled out with biopsy and then um, subsequent histopathology. So that brings us to our case, which was a 46-year-old white female um, with a history of chronic reflux symptoms and an eight-week history of new onset dysphagia. Um, she had been on a PPI for three years for her reflux symptoms and the dose was increased after she developed the dysphagia, but that did not help improve her dysphagia. So they did an um, endoscopy and they found these findings. A uh, physical exam was benign with no thyromegaly or adenopathy. There was no weight loss or history of neck surgery. Um, medical history included hypothyroidism, on levothyroxine, and obesity with a BMI of 31. So um, when we did the endoscopy, we saw these linear white plaques in the lower esophagus. Um, there's no bleeding or ulceration and biopsies were taken and they showed perikeratosis with no eosinophils or pseudohyphae, which ruled out the other diagnoses and confirmed the diagnosis of EDS. So how do we treat this? First line treatment for EDS is usually an acid suppressant like a PPI. But since our patient had already been on a PPI for three years and the increase in dose did not um, help her symptoms, she, a steroid was added and she was treated with fluticasone propinoate for four weeks. Um, and that helped, that uh, resolved her dysphagia symptoms. So EDS has a really striking and concerning appearance. I, it was one of the first days of my GI rotation when uh, we saw this and I remember I was like, what in the world is that? I had no idea. Um, besides Candida, that was my best guess. Um, so hopefully if there's any medical students out there and you see this, you can look like a rock star on your GI rotation. But um, it's, it's usually, even though it looks concerning, it's usually um, a benign process that is easily treated without long-term sequelae. So that was my presentation. Thank you. So can EDS ever happen solely as a result of having uh, an EGD procedure? 
That's an interesting question. Not that I've um, not that I've read in the literature or that my attending and I discuss, but it can happen with, like I said, certain medicines that cause um, damage to the esophagus. So that would be an interesting study to see. But it would be hard because the endoscopy already happened. <laughs> But if they had a repeat one to see how many of these cases happen after a recent endoscopy, but um, not that I've read that that's been proven before, but that's a really good question.